introduce Cadence Act in the House. The bill would encourage states to toughen their penalties for those found guilty of passing a stop school bus. I'm honored to have the subcommittee chairman as a co-sponsor of that legislation. I hope that my colleagues will support this amendment and I urge them to work to pass both these bills to make it safer for our kids to get to school and back. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa rise? Seek uh, recognition. I think the chairman would like to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I thank the chairwoman. Uh, I appreciate the intent of the amendment of the gentleman from Iowa. The gentleman uh, introduced legislation that would require states to enact harsher penalties for reckless drivers who pass stop school buses. And this amendment complements that legislation and I think sends a, a very, very important message. Uh, the legislation named in memory of the little girl the gentleman spoke about from Iowa uh, that was killed so tragically. Uh, this is extremely important, I think, to raise the profile. I would hope that the authorizing committee in conference on the highway bill would take this into consideration and, and act on this, uh, this very provision. Uh, as a co-sponsor of the act, I commend the, the gentleman's effort and uh, would accept the amendment. So, thank you, gentlemen. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Iowa. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Clerk will read. Page 36, line 11. Highway traffic safety grants, liquidation of contracts, authorization, limitation on obligations, highway trust fund. $501,828,000. Administrative Provisions, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Section 140. An additional $130,000 shall be made available to pay for travel expenses for state management reviews. Section 141. The limitations on obligations shall not apply to obligations for which obligation authority was made available in previous public laws. Section 142, none of the funds shall be used to implement Section 404 of Title 23, United States Code, Federal Railroad Administration Safety and Operations, $184 million. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 39, line 4, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $5,404,000, page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount insert increased by $5,404,000. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. My amendment would simply reduce funding for administrative expenses within the Federal Railroad Administration by $5,404,000. This office is one of 13 in the underlying bill which are slated to receive increases for administrative expenses, expenses despite the fiscal emergency that we're facing as a nation. This, like many of the amendments that I'm bringing, would just reduce funding back to current levels, back to the FY12 levels. We have many sections of this bill that are slated to be increased. But as we face an economic emergency as a nation, as we're spending money that we don't have, we're spending 40 cents of every dollar is being borrowed. And we just have to stop the outrageous spending that's going on here in Washington. And this amendment would simply bring the administrative expenses for the Federal Railroad Administration back to current levels. Would not reduce the functions of the administration. It would just keep funding at our current levels. It makes sense to just stop increasing. So I urge support of my amendment and I yield back to balance my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. 
I thank the gentlewoman, uh, Chairman. Uh, I must oppose the gentleman's amendment. Uh, this would not allow the Federal Rail Administration to hire additional safety inspectors and fully implement risk reduction, uh, the risk reduction program. These investments have a proven record to reduce the amount of crashes on our nation's railways. While we appreciate the gentleman's concern over the debt, this is a, an arbitrary way to budget and negates months of work on this committee to try and determine the proper funding levels for these different uh, functions. Uh, the bill already cuts $4 billion from 2012, uh, which is a very fiscally responsible level, and I would urge a no vote uh, on the amendment, and I would yield back. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Madam Chair. Gentleman from Georgia. Ask for the yeas and nays. The gentleman asked for a recorded vote. Yes, Madam Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 39, line 6, Railroad Research and Development, $35,500,000. Railroad Rehabilitation and Improvement Financing Program. The Secretary is authorized to issue direct loans and loan guarantees pursuant to Sections 502 through 504 of the Railroad Revitalization and Regulatory Reform Act of 1976, Public Law 94-210, operating subsidy grants to the National Railroad Passenger Corporation, $350 million. Capital and debt service grants to the National Railroad Passenger Corporation, $1,452,000,000. Million. Next Generation High-Speed Rail Rescission, $1,973,000 are hereby permanently rescinded. Northeast Corridor Improvement Program rescission, $4,419,000. Administrative provisions, Federal Railroad Administration, Section 150. Funds provided for the National Railroad Passenger Corporation shall immediately cease in the event that Corporation contracts to have ser services provided from any location outside the United States. Section 151, the Secretary may receive and expend cash and utilize spare parts from non-United States government sources to repair damages. Section 152, the Secretary is authorized to allow the issuer of any preferred stock sold to the Department to redeem such stock. Section 153, None of the funds provided to the National Railroad Passenger Corporation may be used to fund any overtime cost in excess of $35,000 for any individual employee. Section 154, the unobligated balance of funds shall be used for the elimination of hazards of railway highway crossings. Federal Transit Administration administrative expenses, $100 million. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois seek recognition? Madam Chair, I've moved to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I rise to engage in a colloquy with my good friend from Iowa, distinguished chairman, Mr. Latham. First, I'd like to acknowledge the difficult and challenging job the chairman has had in crafting this bill. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge all the work of um, Ranking Member Olver, not just this year, but uh, in years past here in Congress and especially on this uh, head of this committee. In 2008, Congress passed a mandate requiring commuter and freight railroads to implement positive train control by 2015. While PTC provides a very significant safety improvement, it is also very costly. The Federal Railroad Administration has estimated that the total cost for PTC will be $13.2 billion industry-wide. Recognizing costs when we were working on the bill to implement the mandate, I was able to add language authorizing the Rail Safety Technology Grant Program at $50 million per year. 
Since the program was authorized, however, Congress has only appropriated $50 million for one year. This mandate is especially hard on commuter railroads. In the Chicago region, Metro serves approximately 300,000 commuters every weekday. Metro estimates that PTC will cost $200 million, an amount the agency will struggle to afford. There are many other commuter railroads in this country facing similar situations and need some help implementing the safety technology. But recognizing the difficult choices the chairman has had to make on this bill, I will not offer an amendment, but would ask that as this bill moves forward to conference and in future appropriations bills, we work together to find a way to find some level of federal support to help defray the cost for our nation's railroads to implement PTC. With that, I yield to Chairman Latham. I, I thank the gentleman uh, for his hard work on this, uh, in this area and for his efforts on the Transportation Committee. Uh, commuter railroads are an extremely important mode of transportation and are critical to many regions of our, of our regional economies. I would be more than happy to work with the gentleman on ways to address the PTC funding issues as we go to conference and in the future. Uh, reclaiming my time, I yield back. thank the gentleman and look forward to working with him on this thank funding you. issue. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. What purpose does the gentleman of Georgia State recognition? Hope we're at the right place. I've got an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 48, line 16, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $1,287,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount insert increased by $1,287,000. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. My amendment would reduce funding for the administrative expenses within the Federal Transit Administration by $1,287,000. This office is one of 13 in the underlying bill which are slated to receive increases for administrative expenses despite the dire fiscal environment we have in our nation. We've got to stop the outrageous spending that government's been doing. Passage of my amendment would just simply bring the funding level for this for these administrative expenses within the Federal Transit Administration back to the level of this year. It would just reduce the increase back to current levels. I urge support of my amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Madam Chairman. The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Um, I claim time in opposition to this amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. What I understand of this amendment is that the, um, the gentleman from Georgia is now, uh, is now removing a little over a, mil a million dollars, a million three hundred thousand or thereabouts, from the hundred million that is uh, assigned by, the, by, the, by Mr. Latham's bill uh, for the administrative expenses of the FTA. Well, now. The FTA, as I have pointed out in, our, um, in my opening statement, we now have 65% uh, have of all of our population in this country, and it's going up every census, is now living in metropolitan areas with, uh, uh, with populations of greater than half a million people. And that the remarkable thing about this is that among the 50 largest metropolitan areas, there are, there are a series of very swiftly growing by 25 percent every decade, 25 percent increase in, in uh, the populations of those metropolitan areas. It is in those metropolitan areas of which Georgia has one major one, obviously, the whole Atlanta area, which is growing by more than 25 percent every decade, and, uh, and, and the gentleman is trying to, to uh, constrain the number of dollars that FTA, which is the agency 
that provides the, the uh, services, that provides the d development of transit services for all of these major metropolitan areas around the country, I think that this is an exceedingly modest amount of increase uh, that has been, been pr proposed and uh, virtually everybody has metropolitan areas that are in need of this uh, uh, enormous increase in investment for, uh, for transit services, for public transportation services, whether they be by commuter rail or by light rail, uh, any one of those programs I just think that this is a, um, an a, a exceedingly short-sighted uh, amendment be, to be trying to impose upon the FTA, which has increase in its total services to the uh, urban parts of the country. Uh, year after year, the, the um, number of grants that are being given out, the, the amount of administration of those grants, goes up, and it must continue to go up if we are going to continue to have a growth in population, which we expect is going to continue at roughly 10 percent per year, per, uh, per decade, as it has in the last decade. So I, uh, I just simply strongly oppose this amendment and uh, think that it is a uh, urgent vote on the amendment, uh, think that it is clearly a a, a non-productive thing to do, a counterproductive thing to be doing, uh, no matter what our uh, economic times may look like at the present time. We have to get back to a growth program in this country. We have to get back to building more infrastructure and to administrate through the FTA the programs by which those, those infrastructure improvements get, get made in, in all of the metropolitan areas that are growing around the country. And I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Iowa is recognized. I uh, move to uh, strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I thank the distinguished uh, chairwoman. Uh, I rise to oppose the gentleman's amendment. Uh, this is a minor 1.3 percent increase over the prior year with all of the increase going to uncontrollable costs such as additional uh, compensable workday, rent, and IT maintenance costs. Uh, further, we've already rejected 66 million of funds for new activities requested in the President's budget. Uh, this is also one mode where we shouldn't cut funds. FTA staffing has increased only 19.7 percent over the last 20 years, and FTA uh, funding has increased by 129 percent, and the number of grants FTA administers and oversees has increased 118 percent. Uh, I'm not sure cutting S&E funding is the right thing to do in an agency that oversees uh, this much of the federal funds. Uh, we're talking about uh, point zero 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 five full-time equivalent for every uh, thousand dollars that the uh, grants are doled out. I, I thank the gentleman for his interest in uh, reducing spending. I would say we've already cut 66 million and will oppose any effort to reduce FDA's uh, oversight ability. Uh, again, I would uh, ask for a no vote and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Madam Chair. The gentleman from Georgia. I ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 49, line 1, formula and bus grants, limitation on obligations, highway trust fund, $8,360,565,000. Liquidation of contract authority, highway trust fund, $9,400,000,000. Research and university research centers, $44,000,000. 
capital investments, $1,816,993,000. Grants to the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, $150 million. Administrative provisions, Federal Transit Administration, including rescission of funds. Section 160. Limitations on obligations for programs of the Federal Transit Administration shall not apply. Section 161. Funds appropriated under the Federal Ms. Transit Speaker. Administration's discretionary program shall be directed to projects eligible. Mr. Speaker. For what purpose is the gentleman from New Jersey? We have an amendment, amendment at the desk there. The gentleman will kindly send his amendment to the desk. It should be. The gentleman was on his feet at the time uh, the, the paragraph in question was read. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Garrett of New Jersey, page 50, line 18, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by zero dollars. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $150 million. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Yeah, thank the speaker. So it is the uh, desire of this House and members on this side of the aisle that uh, we put an end to uh, put an end to earmarks. And uh, yet, some might say that in the uh, this bill there contains one hundred fifty million dollars solely for the benefit of one particular project, the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, or WMATA. Now, this is just one tenth of the one point five billion dollars that Congress intends to spend on the D.C. Metro system over a ten-year period. Now, this may or may not be considered uh, your average earmark. You know, the Heritage Foundation has dubbed this, according to Heritage, the largest one in American history, the largest earmark in American history. Why? Well, the amendment is simple before us. It would eliminate this subsidy to a model that has re received ever since just back in 2008. So at a time of record budget deficits and debt, the American people cannot afford to provide a special subsidy, especially when it takes into consideration the fact that the D.C. metro area already receives, it already received funds from several different federal transit programs. And given the performance of this agency, I really find it amazing. I find it astounding that this year the American people should be expected to give them, well, another $150 million of their hard-earned money. In addition to the daily service interruptions, the lax management, and the general poor performance that we're all familiar with, Metro has a significant record of wasteful spending. In 2005, the Washington Post reported that Metro spent $382 million to rebuild cars, only to have them break down more often than those that weren't overhauled. And the Post also pointed out that when senior agency attorneys wanted two new window offices, well, they spent $270,000 just to accommodate them. And why not? It's just taxpayers' dollars from across the rest of this country. You know, earlier this year, it was reported that the Office of Inspector General uncovered several personnel and unwarranted expenses on Metro's credit cards, such as $2,000 worth of gift cards and three camcorders and valued at 700 bucks and even $180 just for headphones alone. So, Mr. Speaker, we cannot afford to keep pouring our money into an agency that really clearly hasn't done its job of cleaning its own house. And finally, it is curious to note that the $150 million this bill provides for is $15 million more, $15 million more than the President requested in his budget. Do we really want to be outspending the President of the United States in this area? So, finally, hardworking taxpayers should not be forced to subsidize a transportation system that has basically failed over the years to get its own fiscal house in order. We owe it to the American people to do better than that. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Or what, for what reason does the gentleman seek recognition? Uh, I, uh, I claim time in opposition to the amendment. 
The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Well, uh, Madam Chairwoman, the, um, the amendment that is offered here in this instance is really quite a curious one, it seems to me. The, uh, the gentleman offering the amendment is from New Jersey. The, uh, the, largest, the largest overall metropolitan system with its, with its commuter rails, with its expansions needed, always repairing, always upgrading, always e expanding the systems that, that uh, serve the whole New York metropolitan area, is, serves northern New Jersey, which is part, partly serves people in its district. Now, the amendment that is being proposed is uh, an amendment that affects WMATA, the Washington, Virginia, Maryland metropolitan area, which is our sixth largest metro area with somewhat over five million people. I don't know exactly, though my staff here is trying to figure it out, how many riders there are in WMATA each year. The, uh, the expenditure under consideration of $150 million a year is fully authorized by the PREA Act in 2008, signed by President Bush at that time. And uh, this is about the third or fourth year of the $150 million guarantee, the commitment in the authorizing bill to do the $150 million per year in the whole system, no specific place, not in a specific congressional district, though there are several congressional districts in which WMATA functions. And um, it's matched dollar for dollar. It's 50 percent matching monies that the uh, Maryland and Virginia and D.C. have to match the $150 million along the way. And we do have, occasionally, safety problems. We have had some crashes here in Washington, and some people who have been, uh, who have been injured or killed in those crashes. And I find it really quite curious that the gentleman from New Jersey would be trying to take away the money that is fully authorized. I'd be happy to yield. I find it odd that I'm in the, in the position here of actually defending the President of the United States and defending what his recommendations are in this area, but I gladly do so. The, the President suggested that um, all those factors that you just laid out taken into consideration, it was his opinion that we, are, we should not be spending this full amount of money. It was the President Obama's suggestion that we actually curtail the money. Perhaps yes. it's a, an, All right. It's reclaiming my time. It has been the position of our subcommittee looking at realizing that the authorization in the PREA Act and the commitments that had been made to this metropolitan area, which many of us and many of our staffs use uh, uh, for their transportation. We have had serious safety problems and uh, serious, uh, a serious need has been shown through those safety prob problems for upgrading of the, uh, of the equipment and systems that we use in this area. So I, I don't, uh, I think it is, it is certainly my position, and I think it is the uh, chairman of the subcommittee's position, that this was a choice well made, critically made, with critical thought to, to why this was being done for the for the safety of people using the WMATA public transportation system so the all over yield? Maryland, D.C., and northern, northern Virginia. Well, it, well, the gentleman will yield. Then the question is, are you suggesting that the president does not care for the safety of this administration? Are you suggesting that the president not did not give a critical I'm any, any such thing. I'm suggesting that this is a legislative position that this should be done, that it would be agreed to be done, 
at the, uh, I now have the number of riders. We had 217 million riders in this system, the WMATA system, in 2011. That's a huge number of riders. And, uh, and they deserve some, act, some activity and some consideration for the safety of the WMATA system. The gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman for, from Virginia, what, for what purpose does the for, for, gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? I rise in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, this language uh, came about as a result of our former colleague, uh, Tom, Tom Davis. There are many ideas behind it. I didn't know the amendment was coming up. I think that's part of the problem around here on the pre-filing, just to let members know what is coming up so they know, but I did see it. I ran over. One, uh, the number of federal employees. This serves the Pentagon. It serves most of the federal agencies in the government. But if you looked at the Metro today, most of the people riding it today were tourists from New Jersey and from Texas and from other, other places like that around. When you look at the Metro with regard to uh, the inauguration and many of the other events, so that was the whole concept that the administration, both Republican and Democrat, and this was a Republican amendment offered by Congressman Tom, Tom Davis, to have this funding over a period of, I think, if my memory serves me, over a period of uh, 10, 10 years. So I rise uh, uh, in strong opposition to the Garrett Amendment and ask the Congress to maintain the integrity of what Congressman Davis and many other Congresses have done in the past. And I don't know if I can retain the balance of my time. Well, the gentleman yield on that point? I yield to the gentleman. And I understand all the uh, points that you raise as far as who's using this system. Uh, it's New Jersey people and New York people. But I can make the exact same argument about the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area in our transit system as well. And we don't have a $150 million, a million dollar extra um, earmark in for our area. Already you're getting the, the, metro, the D.C. metro area is getting $1.5 billion from Congress, from the U.S. taxpayers, from, from Colorado to Oklahoma to Tennessee for this system. And now they're getting $150 million more. But all the tour tourists that come up from all over the United States to visit our, my metropolitan area in New York, New Jersey, uh, we're not getting an extra $150 million. And we have the exact same uh, concerns as far as safety and uh, maintenance and the rest. So the constituents in my area is saying, why is it that the, only the constituents down here get this extra earmark and we don't see the same thing for other metropolitan areas? I'll yield back to the gentleman. I thank the gentleman if I can. Uh, this is the nation's capital. And we are the nation's capital. We represent people from all over the world uh, come here. And the New York system, and I want to be sure, things are thrown around on this floor many times that are not accurate. A large proportion of the New York system was paid for with regard to uh, federal tax, taxpayer money. Uh, this was the agreement that was made by the Government Operations Committee, I think, in conjunction with Congressman Davis. Congressman Hoyer and others uh, a number of years ago. Congressman Davis is no longer here, uh, but that was the whole sentiment with, re with regard behind it. So I urge the members uh, to vote no on the Garrett Amendment uh, and yield back the balance of my, my time. The gentleman yields back. I don't have a chair one. For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. I, I do understand that it is since I had. Uh, since I had claimed time and opposition, that I retained then the right to strike the last word. So I have struck the last word. Thank you very much. Um, just to continue this one, New York at the present time is, is benefiting from enormous additional, uh, additional <laughs> okay. investments. 
two major projects, one that reaches out into Long Island, the so-called East Side Access, which you wouldn't uh, know or care perhaps much about, but it reaches to all the population out on Long Island to the uh, east, to that direction for you, uh, to the east, and, uh, and the Second Avenue subway. So that that New York system has those two very large programs. Each one of them is about $2 billion. $2 billion going on concurrently with what this 10-year program is for the maintenance of the system here in, in, in Washington when we have had clear evidence of safety difficulties and equipment difficulties that had not been taken into account. We were not putting enough investment into the maintenance of the Washington system. And to uh, add to the gentleman from Virginia's comment about this, the, our constituents from every district all over the country come to Washington and deserve to have a really good public transportation system in Washington. So it is in all of our interests to make certain that that system is up to snuff on safety and the equipment uh, is uh, in good repair. So I have no apology whatsoever for supporting this one and, uh, and, and would, would strongly urge that we, uh, that we defeat this amendment. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? To strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Madam Chairman, I want to be sure to point out to the House that the account has, is uh, authorized under the Pasture Rail Improvement Act. This uh, money has to be, in order for the uh, metropolitan D.C. area to receive the funds, uh, Virginia, Maryland, and the District of Columbia have to match the money, uh, which certainly helps. And I also note that the uh, the uh, committee has included language which is very important that now local entities have to provide, uh, that the federal government uh, cannot provide uh, more than 60 percent, is that I believe correct, uh, for the first time. That's important that the local communities do their, their fair share. And all of the money in this, uh, in the um, Passenger Rail Improvement Act for the D.C. area has to be used for safety and capital improvements only. Uh, they can only use the money to buy new cars and equipment to improve the safety of the system. And, and um, as my good friend from New Jersey has pointed out, if there's you know, clearly evidence apparently of misuse of the funds, the Inspector General can certainly investigate that and even bring criminal charges against those responsible for using the funds for a purpose other than that authorized by the Pasture Rail Improvement Act. I think it's also important to point out that the bill overall cuts new starts funding by $419 million and cuts administrative, the uh, request for administrative funding uh, uh, for the FTA by $66 million. Uh, these bills that Chairman Rogers has presided over that all of us on appropriations have worked so hard on, uh, for the first time we've got a, a whole series of bills reducing spending year after year. There's much, much more to do. And uh, while I'm certainly in philosophical agreement with the gentleman's uh, uh, amendment, uh, because of the careful balance the bill strikes and in funding an authorized program that can, it is, can only be used for a limited purpose that must be matched, uh, the committee would like to ask for a no vote hey, on the gentleman's amendment. Yield, then? I'd be happy to yield to my good friend from New Jersey. So I, I will just make just three quick points. I think it's three. One is, again, it is really odd that uh, here I stand um, with you next to the microphone that I am actually defending the more conservative position and actually the defending the position of the President of the United States who says we should be spending less money. Secondly, in a time when we all said let's eliminate earmarks, here we have, as Heritage says, the largest earmark in American history. Because this is not simply an issue of saying that this program has a, a safety program and a safety need and no one else does. If it wasn't a, a grant application process where uh, New York, New Jersey, or any other system around the country could have applied and say our safety needs are X times as high or less than Washington, D.C., maybe there wouldn't be a concern. But it, that's not the case here. Um, all, the other met, all the other metropolitan uh, transit systems in the country uh, aren't being weighed as far as what their safety needs or what their maintenance needs are. It's just simply made a decision here that um, uh, Washington, D.C. and the uh, congressional districts that it contains around it 
somehow or other merit greater uh, service than do the other ones in Chicago or uh, New York or New Jersey, what have you. And I think that's where the uh, if, difficulty lies. If, so, yeah, if, back. if I could reclaim my time, sure. the gentleman and I work together arm in arm on so many good conservative causes. And in, in this uh, one area, we, we do have a slight disagreement. I would point out that the statute uh, requires that the uh, uh, Metropolitan Washington uh, Transit Entity has to submit a grant application. Under the law, they're required to, they can't just automatically access these funds. They have to submit a grant application that complies with all of the Federal Transit Administration's uh, requirements. They have to demonstrate that the money will be used for the narrow purposes authorized by the Act for safety and capital improvements, and uh, they must comply with all of the other uh, requirements that every other transit entity in the nation complies with, and for all of those reasons, to keep the careful balance the committee has struck, the overall reduction in funding, uh, the committee would uh, ask the, for a no vote on this amendment. I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from New Jersey. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The and amendment the is not agreed to. The gentleman no, from New chair, Jersey. Chair, like to uh, record it. Thank Pursuant you. to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from New Jersey will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 51, line 7, Administrative Provisions, Federal Transit Administration, including rescission of funds, Section 160, Limitation on Obligations Programs for the Federal Transit Administration shall not apply, Section 161. Funds appropriated under the Federal Transit Administration's discretionary program shall be directed to projects eligible. Section 162, funds appropriated before October 1, 2012 that remain available may be transferred. Section 163, funds made available for new fixed guideway system projects may be used during this fiscal year. Section 164, unobligated funds that are available for reallocation reallocation shall be directed to projects for the purposes for which they were originally provided. Section 165, the Secretary may use for program management activities 1.5 percent of the amount made available to carry out Section 5316 of Title 49 United States Code. Section 166, none of the funds made available shall be available to carry out 49 U.S.C. 5309 M6B and C. Section 167, none of the funds made available shall be used to enter into a full funding grant agreement. Section 168, the Secretary shall conduct a former adjudication in accordance with Section 554 of Title V United States Code. Section 169, the Secretary may consider the cost and ridership of any connected project. Section 169A. 70 million eight hundred sixty seven thousand three hundred ninety four dollars are hereby permanently rescinded. Section one sixty nine B. None of the funds may advance a new capital project for the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Harris County, Texas. Section one sixty nine C. Fuel for vehicle operation shall be treated as an associated capital maintenance item. For what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee seek Madam recognition? Madam Chairwoman, uh, I rise to raise a point of order against Section 169C. The gentleman will state his point of order. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, I raise a point of order against Section 169C on page 56, lines 10 through 16. This section violates Clause 2B of Rule 21. It changes existing law and therefore constitutes legislating on an appropriations bill in violation of House rules. I would also note that the issue of when transit agencies can use federal transit funds for operating expenses is part of conference negotiations on the highway bill, which hopefully will be resolved at the, by the end of this week. The conference report will include a better, more targeted policy on this issue, and so I request a, a ruling in favor of this point of order. Does any other member wish to be heard on the point of order? If not, the chair will rule. The chair finds that this section explicitly supersedes existing law. The section therefore constitutes legislation in violation of Clause 2 of Rule 21. The point of order is sustained and the section is stricken from the bill. The clerk will read. 
page 56, line 17, St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation. The Development Corporation authorized to make such expenditures available to the corporation and in accord with law. Operations and Maintenance, Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund, $33 million. Maritime Administration, Maritime Security Program, $184 million. Operations and Training, $145,753,000. Ship disposal, $4 million. Maritime guaranteed loan title 11 program account, including transfer of funds, $3,750,000. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 59, line 7, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $10,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount insert increased by $10,000. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Madam Chairman, my amendment would reduce funding for the administrative expenses of the Maritime Guaranteed Loan Program by $10,000, and that's all. That doesn't sound like much, but it freezes spending at the current levels. I believe very firmly that we, we ought to cut spending in this house. We've cut IMRAs, our own operating accounts for our own administrative expenses by 11 percent. And what this amendment does is just freeze it at the current fiscal year 12 levels. And I uh, think that this is, though it's a minor amount of money, to most folks, still $10,000 is a lot of money to this old Georgia board. So I encourage the adoption of my amendment, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from, for what purpose does the gentleman from uh, Iowa seek recognition? Strike the last word. The gentleman is uh, recognized for five minutes. I, I would just uh, accept the amendment. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The clerk will read. Page 59, line 10, Administrative Provisions, Maritime Administration, Section 170. The, the administration is authorized to make necessary, necessary repairs involving government property. Section 171, none of the funds shall be used to negotiate or perform fee-for-service contracts for vessel disposal. Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration Operation Expenses Pipeline Safety Fund, including transfer of funds, $23,030,000. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 60, line 25, after the first dollar amount, insert reduced by $1,670,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $1,670,000. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This, like many amendments that I'm offering tonight, would free spending at the Fed at the FY12 levels. We've just got to stop spending money we don't have, Madam Chairman, and I accept, uh, I recommend adoption of my amendment, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Any other member, see, any other member seek recognition? The gentleman from Massachusetts. Uh, Madam Chairman, I, uh, I claim time in opposition. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. It was, um, what we're talking about here is pipeline safety inspectors. The increase in pipeline safety inspectors in a situation our, our agency, what is the agency? Uh, the agency is Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. Um, that organization has, over the last few years, had an ever-increasing responsibility. Just about 18 months ago, we had a uh, Pacific Gas and Electric Pipeline that ruptured in San Bruno, California. 
And the ensuing fire and explosion leveled some 35 homes and killed eight people. Uh, the National Transportation Safety Board's investigation found that uh, Pacific Gas and Electric's poor quality control and integrity management systems contributed to the cause of the pipeline rupture. It's a prime example of why we need strong enforcement and oversight of the nation's ever, ever expanding, really already vast, but ever expanding pipeline system. Now, so that um, Section 31 of the Pipeline Safety Reauthorization Bill enacted in January 3rd of this year authorized 10 additional pipeline inspection and enforcement personnel if the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration had filled all of 135 of its existing positions um, uh, by a, a certain deadline. We need to be doing more rather than less on pipeline safety, and so I oppose this amendment very strongly and uh, would yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? I move to strike the last word, Madam Chairman. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I thank you, and I rise in uh, strong opposition to this amendment. Uh, this program was uh, authorized just last year. The funds that are being cut here are for safety inspectors, and we've had explosions in Iowa. The gentleman referred to very tragic uh, pipeline explosions uh, elsewhere around the, the country. Uh, we have seen a number of these uh, explosions, incidents. Uh, we simply cannot compromise uh, safety in this regard. Uh, there's a, it's a small increase and consistent with the uh, authorize, uh, authorization that was just passed by this Congress. Uh, I, I can tell you from personal experience in a little town of Alexander, uh, about five miles outside of town, it's been several years ago, but uh, a pipeline exploded. It uh, basically we had to evacuate about a 15 mile area, and uh, it was uh, a, a huge issue. Fortunately, no one was killed in that. Uh, explosion, but I'll just say that this is a very important function uh, that we need to have these inspectors. We need to have a focus on pipeline safety, and so again, I would recommend a no vote on this amendment, and I yield back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. The gentleman from Georgia? Ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 61, line 5, hazardous materials, $42,546,000, of which $1,725,000 shall remain available until September 30, 2015. Pipeline Safety, Pipeline Safety Fund, Oil Spill Liability Trust Fund, Pipeline Safety Design Review Fund, $111,252,000. Emergency Preparedness Grants, Emergency Preparedness Fund, $188,000 to remain available until September 30, 2014. Research and Innovative Technology Administration, Research and Development, $13,500,000. Office of the Inspector General, salaries and expenses, $84,499,000. Surface Transportation Board, salaries and expenses, $31,250,000. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will read the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 65, line 11, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $1,940,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount insert increased by $1,940,000. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. My amendment will reduce funding for salaries and expenses for the Surface Transportation Board by $1,940,000. This office is one of 13 in the underlying bill which would receive increases for administrative expenses 
in this underlying bill. Passage of my amendment would simply bring funding levels back to current levels of FY12. Madam Chairman, we are spending money we don't have. We have reduced our own operating expenses as members of the House by 11 percent, over 11 percent, and this amendment would just freeze, would prevent any increase in the salaries and expenses for the Surface Transportation Board to this year's level. We've got to be fiscally responsible, Madam Chairman, as a nation. We've got to stop the outrageous spending that's going on here in Washington. And this doesn't even stop it. This just freezes it at the current levels. This hopefully is going to put a little spotlight on the fact that we need to stop spending money we don't have. Stop borrowing 40 cents on every dollar the federal government spends. And my amendment would just freeze spending at the current levels. I urge support of my amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from I, Iowa take I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, Madam Chair, I will not accept the amendment. Yield the back. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The, the clerk will read. Page 65, line 22, General Provisions, Department of Transportation, Section 180. During the current fiscal year, appropriations to the department shall be available for maintenance. Section 181, appropriations shall be available for services as authorized by 5 U.S.C. 3109. Section 182, none of the funds shall be available for salaries and expenses of more than 110 political and presidential appointees in the department. Section 183, no recipient of funds shall disseminate personal information obtained by a State Department of Motor Vehicles. Section 184, funds received by the administration from states, counties, other public authorities, and private sources may be credited to the administration's Federal Aid Highways account. Section 185, none of the funds may be used to make a grant unless the Secretary notifies the committees before any agreement totaling $1 million or more is announced by the Department. Section 186, rebates, minor fees, and other funds received by the Department are to be credited and allocated to the Department. Section 187, amounts made available that the Secretary determines represent improper payments to the Department to a third-party contractor which are recovered shall be available to reimburse expenses incurred by the Department in recovering improper payments. Section 188, funds provided in or limited by this Act are subject to a reprogramming action. Section 189, none of the funds may be used by the Surface Transportation Board to charge or collect any filing fee. Section 190, funds appropriated may be obligated for the costs related to assessments or reimbursable agreements. This title may be cited as the Department of Transportation Appropriations Act 2013. Title II, Department of Housing and Urban Development, Management and Administration, Administration Operations and Management, $518,068,000. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California seek recognition? Madam Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mrs. Capps of California, page 71, line 19, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $10 million. Page 72, line 3, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $2 million. Page 72, line 8, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $5 million. Page 72, line 20, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $3 million. Page 102, line 2, after the dollar amount, after the first dollar amount insert increased by $10 million. The general ladies recognized for five minutes. Madam Chair, this is a straightforward amendment to increase funding for the HUD Housing Counseling Assistance Program. As we all know, the foreclosure crisis continues to ravage our families in many parts of the country. This is a problem in my home state of California, but also in many other states. Nevada, Florida, Ohio, Illinois, and Georgia all have foreclosure rates well above the national average. There are many efforts aimed at solving this crisis, but local housing 
counseling agencies have proven to be among the most effective tools we have to help struggling families stay in their homes during these tough times. These local nonprofits are filled with dedicated staff who work tirelessly to help owners, homeowners make informed decisions and stay in their homes. They provide a wide range of free counseling services, including post purchase counseling, renter counseling, reverse mortgage counseling for senior homeowners, and counseling for homeless individuals and families seeking shelter. And they depend on federal funding from HUD's Housing Counseling Assistance Program to provide these services. Every dollar allocated to these local organizations helps to ensure that all homeowners in financial distress may have a trusted third-party resource to turn to free of charge. Recognizing the value and effectiveness of housing counselors, Congress more than doubled funding for this critical program from 2007 to 2010 to help combat the rapidly in expanding foreclosure crisis. And that money was money well spent. Local counseling agencies used the funding to create jobs by hiring additional counselors and expanding their services to meet the rapidly growing demand created by the recession. Sadly, however, funding for housing counseling assistance was abruptly eliminated in FY 2011. This was a devastating blow to these local organizations, resulting in layoffs and, more important, elimination of a valuable and much-needed service to homeowners who are in trouble. Thankfully, we were able to restore some of this funding last year, and I thank the Chairman and the Appropriations Committee for maintaining last year's funding level in the bill before us. But frankly, this is not enough. The foreclosure crisis is far from over, and the need for this funding has never been greater. Just last month, one in every 639 houses nationwide received a foreclosure notice. That's why my amendment would increase funding for HUD housing counseling assistance by $10 million, matching the President's request of $55 million. The amendment is fully paid for with a $10 million reduction in the administration's operations and management account. This additional funding will make a tremendous difference in the lives of middle-class Americans in my district and across this country who are desperately trying to stay afloat. In my district on the central coast of California, where the foreclosure rate remains well above the national average, every little bit makes such a difference. I know my lo local counseling, uh, housing counselors, like SurePath Financial, like People's Self-Help Housing and Cabrillo Economic Development. They're going to be able to help many more of my constituents with this extra funding. I know some states have been harder hit than others by the foreclosure crisis, but the benefits of counseling extend to all homeowners, not just those facing foreclosure. In a recently released study, HUD examined both families seeking to purchase their first homes and those struggling to prevent foreclosure. In the pre-purchase counseling study, HUD found that of the, those participants that became home, homeowners, all but one of them remained current on their mortgage payments after 18 months. This study shows that housing counseling is not only helping address the current foreclosure crisis, it's also helping prevent future crises by helping homeowners find mortgages that they can afford and fully understand. When homeowners understand their mortgage and properly plan, they are much more likely to make their payments on time and avoid foreclosure in the future. And the Housing Counseling Assistance Program helps to make that happen. This program has broad national support from respected nonprofits like Catholic Charities, National Council on Aging, and the National Council of La Raza, and for profit industry groups like the Mortgage Bankers Association. And it should also have broad bipartisan support here in the House as well. I'm willing to bet that most of my colleagues in this House have referred constituents in need of help to their local housing counseling agencies. I know I certainly have. I have no reservations about referring my constituents to local HUD certified counseling, house, housing counselors because I know they will receive excellent advice and guidance. But as the foreclosure crisis has dragged on, demand for help has far exceeded the resources available. My amendment will not immediately solve this enormous problem, but it will certainly help. This shouldn't be a partisan issue. I know we must make tough choices to balance our budget, but we must also make smart choices. Voting for my amendment is a smart choice. It's also the right choice for Americans who are still struggling to stay afloat. And so I urge my colleagues to support our local housing counselors and vote yes. The gentlelady's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? I uh, rise in opposition to the gentlelady's amendment. The gentleman is